taking us through all of that action. But with that, let's also invite our first corporate on trading hour today. Quest Corp saw an 11% up move on Wednesday. It's up once again today as well. This after promoters of the company picked up a significant stake by means of reverse book building. So to discuss, we're joined by Ajit Isaac, chairman of Quest Corp, to take some questions on this. Mr. Isaac, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, this is Pavitra. If I can just begin by asking you about the holding structure right now, if you can take us through what the Isaac family's total holding is, what Fairfax's total holding is, and uh, of course the reason behind, you know, upping your stake. Sure. So uh, the promoters together, Fairfax and, and uh, me and my family together, own about 56.5% in Quest today. Uh, we've added about, let's say, about five and a half percent in the last one year or so between the two of us. Uh, Fairfax has been investing in India for the last 20 odd years and has a very large book of assets in India or in excess of maybe $7 billion. They're very familiar with the India landscape and the opportunity that India presents. Uh, we think that uh, the best of quest is coming up in, in terms of uh, the changes that's been made uh, the, the assets that we're holding and the changes in the EPS that's going to come in the future. So I think it represents an opportunity for all investors to, to write this uh, process of change that's, that's at quest. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Isaac, uh, morning. Rima here. Are you or is Fairfax keen to increase your holding beyond the current levels? Is there a target that you have in mind? Because now it's the new financial year, so you can go ahead and further raise stake why the creeping acquisition road? So we have an opportunity to do it in the next year, but uh, you know I don't want to speculate on what we could do for the next year coming up. But suffice it to say that I think we, uh, you know, we uh, we see a, a good opportunity at Quest because there's a large formalization process in the labor force that's taking place. People are moving from the informal sector to the formal sector, and in fact, at Quest, out of the 350,000 people we've got. Close to about 145,000 have got UAN numbers for the first time after they joined us. So clearly, we are a starting point for uh, you know employees as they start their professional careers in India. Hmm. Mr. Isaac, uh, good morning. So, uh, since obviously you're quite optimistic on the business, uh, what's the thought process? Is there a specific level that you have in mind that you would want to take your own shareholding up to? Uh, as, uh, you know, part promoters. And I don't know if you've had that discussion with Fairfax. Uh, could we see you or them uh, keep on increasing stake in, in the listed company? So as an uh, as a individual, I have an option to go up to 25% without triggering the creeping acquisition norms. Uh, you know, depending on the opportunities that come, we will take a decision and cross the bridge at that point of time. But as of now, we're happy where we are. Okay, as of now, happy where you are. Uh, Mr. Isaac, I'm going to move on and ask some questions about the business as well. Uh, because, you know, we were looking at the revenue growth. It has been coming down from around 33% that you had in Q1. Uh, it moved to 32.4. And then in Q3 of FI20, uh, FI23, it was around 21. Can you tell us what is the trajectory there? What is the kind of expectation you have for the coming financial year for FI24? Sure. So let's look back a bit over the last five years and then look at this year and then the last two quarters. If you look at 18 to 23, our headcount sort of grew from uh, about uh, 250,000 to about 5 lakh. So we've had a CAGR of almost about uh, 20 odd percent from 18 to now. In the first half of this year, uh, the economy was growing faster. Employment is, a, is largely a function of how, the uh, of how the economy is doing. And uh, the IT segment, uh, lost a lot of its momentum in the second half. So I think it's fair to say that this is a cyclical change in employment. Uh, Quest is affected by that. But from the changes we see in the market, we expect Q1 to be a little better uh, and uh, picking up from there. But even though headcount has you know, grown only by 20%, our revenues have actually grown by 22% uh, you know, in excess of the, the headcount. So that's a significant uh, part of our story as well that revenues are growing faster than headcount. And lastly, our IDC is also coming down. Our IDC, what is potentially at about 8.5% sometime back, dropped to about 6-odd uh, percent uh, last year. And next year, we expect it to be about 55 to 5.7%. So uh, there's an increase in revenues. We, we think revenues can go up by between 15 and 18% uh, for next year and uh, a drop in IDC as well. So FY24, revenue growth is 15 to 18%, right? That's the guidance. 
that's that's what I think we would uh, okay. we would be we would okay. be all right. Okay, just getting specific about IT because that's where the pressure is. Has Q4 staffing for the IT segment been as bad as Q3, worse or same? Just some numbers, or has it improved? So the, uh, the Q4 numbers are not yet complete as of yet because the third month's numbers are yet to come in. Uh, from what we've seen of Q1 and Q2, mostly it's only been replacement hiring and no incremental hiring in the industry. The services segment has been the most hit. Captives have, have, have performed better than uh, services segment. Product, SaaS, and the internet businesses uh, have also been subdued. So I think we should expect Q4 to be in line with what, what was in Q3. Oh. Mm. Okay. Mr. Isaac, just a word on uh, your efforts to shore up margins, which have been, you know, on the the lower side between 3 and 4%. I mean, they've trended closer to 3 than to 4 in the last couple of quarters. And I believe you're roped in BCG for, you know, some kind of strategic initiatives. So what's the progress there? And uh, do you see some tangible uh, impact? Can you give us some sort of a tangible guidance in terms of by the end of this exercise, uh, how much can the needle be moved uh, on the margin profile? So what, uh, what it will result in will be in a set of actions that the management has to take over a period of maybe between the next 12 and 18 months' time. So the result will play out for a longer period of time. But having said that, our goalposts are clear. We want to reduce our IDC. We want to increase our margins from, you know, we were at 3.2, 3.3 in Q3, aiming to go up to about 3.5, and then there on from there to about 4 to 4.5. So if you can stabilize at about 4 to 4.5, I think it's a good margin rate for a business services company. In addition to increasing margins, we also have to work at a DSO. Our DSO is currently at about 62 days. I think if we can lop off about two to four days from that, that will you know, uh, increase the amount of cash coming into the company. So these are two specific actions that we have to take in terms of operations. The third one is in terms of the uh, shape of the portfolio that we've got. There are some assets that we may want to monetize. We've already monetized one asset about six to eight months ago. We may do a couple of them again uh, over the next over the next one year's time, and that will again um, change the way uh, change the way our portfolio looks. Lastly, Monster uh, has had a peak burn of hundred crores this year. So, depending on whatever EBITDA we finish at this year, uh, it will include a, a hundred crore burn for Monster, which was not there previous year. So, you know that will come down for the next year. It will come down to almost half of that for the next year. Uh, and that will therefore add that much more profits to the company. So all of this together will increase our EPS significantly for the next year. So you're, you're targeting to go up to, uh, f you know, about four and a half. That's, that's sort of the objective over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, you mentioned asset monetization. So what is this monetization pipeline like? I mean, is, is there a value that you have already ascribed to it? And uh, is there anything, any asset that you have closed in on, which perhaps could be first off the block, say, in the next one to two quarters? This is work in progress. Uh, the BCG assignment will get over only by maybe the middle of May. So it will be a, a clearer picture on which of the assets that we would like to monetize with emerge by then. Uh, so is there any EPS growth that you have in mind? Because your top line will be growing at 15 to 18%, but there will be margin expansion. The cash burn in Monster will come down by half. Uh, so what will this mean in terms of an EPS growth, according to you? So we think that there is a potential to grow EPS between 30 and 40 percent, at least in the, in, the, in, the, in the year coming up. All right, Mr. Isaac, we're going to leave it at that today. Thank you very much for taking out the time and speaking to us about this recent uh, you know, stake that you've picked up, as well as the outlook for the business. That is the management of Quest Corp telling us that the promoters now own 56.5 percent in the company. For now, they're comfortable with that they're not looking to you know increase the stake right now as far as the revenues go they're looking at 15 to 18 percent for the coming financial year yes or a pro uh, profit growth of 30 to 40 uh, percent yeah. right so yeah. that's quite significant quite significant there and he's sounding very positive on the business as well although of course there are pressures in individual segments like it like you mentioned so that is the management of quest corp we will get into a short break with that but on the